keeping it real simple today using just a piece of printer paper and a ballpoint pen. Let's draw. The secret to drawing with pen is finding the pen that is good for you. <laughs> I use the big round stick grip so you'll see I'm able to get some really thin light lines. I feel like I can get a lot more variety of line weight and line width with this pen. So you'll see just at the beginning I'm trying to just lay out the character, figure out where they're going to sit on the page, and uh, do that very very lightly so that these sort of sketch lines like the construction lines aren't as visible when I've finished the illustration. You really can't do this sort of technique with any sort of gel pen or like a very liquidy pen. The big round stick grip is pretty dry and I think that's what really helps me be able to accomplish these sort of uh, techniques. Um, and then once I have all those constructions laying down and I feel like the character is pretty well laid out on the page, I'll go in and darken some of these some of the lines. <laughs> um, I like to go in with the eyes first just because they're my favorite part to draw and I really think once the face starts looking like a face like I feel just so much more energized to finish the rest of it especially since this particular piece I put a lot of detail into the hair because I was purposely focusing on trying to capture hair and like the strands of hair and like the details of hair because I think I can be a little bit lazy when it comes to hair. I'll tend to like just sort of like make up the curls that don't really follow the curl line like some curls will just be crazier than others <laughs> um so i really wanted to focus on trying to capture a bit more of a realistic -ish hair <laughs> i don't know just following the strands of hair and making it look a little bit more plausible. You may notice that I bounce around a lot <laughs> while working on this particular piece. Like I was using the, doing the face, I was doing the hair, and then I was doing like the flower crown. Um, and that's because there's just a lot of detail on this particular illustration and I don't want to get bored because I mean there's so much going on. Like if I were to focus just on the hair then I think I would get a little bit you know <laughs> bored. So I'm bouncing around working on like her detailed flower crown with like the baby's breath and those leaves and then I'll like jump to the face, work on the face a little bit more and so I'm constantly tweaking and altering different elements of the illustration like slowly and like you know bouncing around and this definitely kept me like you know intrigued and invested in the illustration without like getting too lazy. And you might be thinking, hey, wait a minute, you're an artist. Why are you worried about being bored when you're drawing? And <laughs> the reason I'm talking about this is because like with this drawing in particular and like any drawing where I'm trying to teach myself like a new lesson, like trying to be more detailed with my art and creating like those strands of hair like I was talking about earlier. These are things that I've kind of been putting off for so long. And that's why I'm not as good as good at them as I want to be. So it's very, it's a little bit more difficult for me to practice them because they're obviously things that I don't, I don't gravitate towards drawing on their own. Like they're not things that I'm just like, mm, I just really want to draw really luscious hair right now. Like that's never been something that I've wanted to just draw. Faces have always been like my favorite thing. So I'm able to teach myself to draw something that I'm not as good at and something that I want to improve on by jumping between the face and the hair like very very often and I, it's just like it's kind of like a trade-off it's like oh well I'm getting a little bit bored of doing the hair so let's go back to the face work on the face a little bit and then like okay time's up I need to go back to the hair and like I think it's just a good exercise to help you practice the things that you want to do by incorporating them with some of the things that you need to do so yeah, <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. If you've been around my channel for a while, you know I'm a pretty big advocate for sketching and drawing with pen as like a learning tool. And I've even made a video on just like the benefits of sketching with pen. But I think that this is like one span of like six to eight months where I literally only drew in pen. And over that time, I kind of learned what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it. And I feel like I've learned a lot of techniques that have helped me create better illustrations with pen. And like, and I even I think gotten to this point where I was like pencils are for losers pens are the way to go <laughs> which is so not true because after I had gone through that span of only sketching in pen and like I feel like it had really improved my art and like taught me to be light-handed and to really be conscious of the lines that I'm putting on the paper because I couldn't erase that moment when I like switched back to like a mechanical pencil which had been my go-to before that like oh like mechanical pencil just felt so much like I, my results were so much better like I feel like whatever I had learned <laughs> using a pen for those months 
had translated into using this pencil and I was like using it so much better than I had ever used it before. And it was just like, it's like a whole new world. Like it was amazing. And I remember just being like, how, did, how could I ever give up a mechanical pencil? And I think that was because I hadn't learned the techniques that I needed to use a mechanical pencil to its fullest potential. And by using pen, it had somehow like thrown me into this place where I had to learn these things to be able to use a pen properly. And then when I went back to the mechanical pencil, it was just, whew, it was just like, a, I was just blown away. It was so much fun. And like, currently I really enjoy using a pencil, but I'll go back and forth and use a pen depending on like, you know, where, where I am at that moment. Like if I don't really want to smudge, <laughs> I don't want a lot of smudges happening all over my hand. I'll use the pen. And like, that's another just awesome thing about pen in particular. It's just, there is no smudges. And like, you can sketch in your sketchbook and you don't have to worry about the pages rubbing up against each other and like ruining all your hard work. Like everything is just the way you left it. It's just, there's that sketch. It's exactly how I drew it. <laughs> Whereas a pencil, like sometimes when you're just throwing your bag and your, your book in your bag and like pulling it out and flipping through the pages or drawing on it and like your hand just goes all over your sketches and then you just end up with lead just spread everywhere and it's just a big mess and it's like somehow it got on your face and you're like what when did that happen and you only notice it a couple hours later whereas a pen doesn't do that so yeah <laughs> I'm a big fan of pens but I'm also a fan of pencils and I think using a pen has taught me to use a pencil better so if you've never sketched in pen I definitely recommend it get out a nice cheap one of those pens like the one I'm using where you can get like 12 for a dollar those cheap ones are like the bank gives you for free <laughs> those are like the perfect pens to sketch with because they're not super juicy they have a bit of a dryness to them and you can get those light lines and those thicker lines and it teaches you to be a lot lighter handed and you don't have those smudges and like you're very conscious about the lines you're placing on the paper and you're like I don't know it just it's a different mindset and I just definitely recommend it if you've never done it before do it use a pen Oh, I wanted to talk about this. For the last little while, you'll notice I've been doing a bunch of hatching all over the hair, trying to darken the tone of the hair. And this was like, this really like brought the piece together. It was a lot of fun because it just separated like her skin tone from the hair and it separated like the flower crown from the hair as well. Created that contrast we're going for. And I, I really do like the way it looked after I did that. But also by doing that, it gave a lot more attention to like the size of the hair. And at this point I noticed like her hair has some serious volume like girl <laughs> that's amazing um I, not exactly what I was going for <laughs> but I mean I'm sure she's quite happy that she was this blessed <laughs> like just look at the, it's like a goddess or something which I guess that's kind of what I was going for with like the flower crown like a bit of a regal look so the fact that her hair is just so big and voluminous I don't know kind of fits the theme but the other thing was when I was sketching this because I originally had done like a very small sketch in my sketchbook and I tend to draw small and it's kind of what I'm more comfortable drawing so another thing I was trying to practice with this particular illustration was drawing bigger so I tried to draw a whole face over the entire eight and a half by eleven sheet and <laughs> um, I kind of messed up translating the sketch to this paper and I think it had something to do with it being so large because in the sketch her face is like dipped down and she's like looking up, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like that. And <laughs> um, with this sketch, I, I definitely adjusted the proportions of the face so that she was kind of like looking up, but I had simplified it in a way that, you know, like in the other sketch, her lips were like under her nose, like her face was so dipped. Whereas this one, it wasn't quite as much. I like, I don't know, I tried to, I guess, beautify it. Maybe that makes sense. Cause you know, that angle doesn't look very good. Like you don't, no one wants to see their nose and their mouth in the, like, the exact same location basically. So I guess I tried to like beautify it, air quotations. And by doing that, it stretched out the face some more, which kind of destroyed the proportions and the foreshortening. So I kind of like cheated and in the cheating kind of had a worse result. I don't know though, because I kind of like the face, but it does look weird and squished, which I guess I did on purpose, but that's what happened. <laughs> And then once I was done with the hair, I'm pretty happy with that. I thought it was a bit too blank where her chest was and I wanted to give her some kind of outfit. And I decided on like a lacy, almost turtlenecky thing, like a part of a wedding dress maybe. So it's like super lacy and detailed. So I started working on that. I slowly built it up, started with like some scribbles basically. And then the lines that I liked the best, I darkened up and you know built up on top of and 
worked on that <laughs> and slowly made it look, I guess, a little bit more like lace. I really should have looked up a reference <laughs> before I did that, um, but overall, I guess I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> anyway, this was, uh, oh wait, I also actually, I guess I cheated. I went in with like this Posca pen to try and add some highlights to her eyes because I had originally left spaces so the white paper could, you know, shine through where highlights would be in her eyes. But I decided to go in with the Posca pen and just try to lighten that up just a little bit. And yeah, basically after that, I just went over and did a few more details here and there and I was done. So here is my finished illustration using only a ballpoint pen and a bit of a Posca. And uh, yeah, this is what I ended up with. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching me sketch this out and draw for you. Um, I had a lot of fun and I'm really excited to be teaching myself new things and you know getting better and slowly improving my art style so yeah thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys all next week and i hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles bye